Please start. Good evening, sir. Good please, evening, sir. Please, please, please sit down. Thank you, sir. Please sit down. Your name? Sir, my name is Sakshi Mishra. Okay, Ms. Sakshi. Uh, you have made two attempts. Yes, sir. And uh, are you going to UPSC for the first time for interview? Or the first time. First time. That's great. How many mocks you have done so far? So this is my first mock. Okay, very nice. So let us start. Can you tell us something about yourself? So my name is Sakshi Mishra. I was born in Shehdul town in Madhya Pradesh. I have done my schooling from Kendri Vidyale. After which I earned my bachelor's degree in political science and history from Lady Sri Ram College for Women, Delhi University. I enjoy making own paintings, reading and blogging. Sit, relax, please. Let your back touch the back of the chair. Thank you, sir. Uh, it's there also, you have to do like this. So, you are from Madhya Pradesh. Yes, sir. What is so special about Madhya Pradesh? Tell me a few special things about Madhya Pradesh. So, there are numerous specialities of Madhya Pradesh. In Tell that. me three. So, uh, we are very uniquely endowed with respect to our cultural heritage. Uh, Madhya Pradesh has a very rich tribal heritage. So we have one of the... These are in other states also. Uh, yes, sir. What you said, first yes, and sir. second. Tell me something which is not sir, elsewhere. Uh, sir, in terms of natural <coughs> beauty, we have the largest number of national parks in the country. We mm. have a white tiger population that mm. only Madhya Pradesh has right now. Mm -hmm. Further, uh, when we talk about natural beauty, we have a fossil national park, which is truly unique in the country. What else? Uh, from an economic point of view, sir, uh, while there are all the sectors prevalent in all the states, but Madhya Pradesh has a judicious mix of both manufacturing in which we have mining and other activities. You could have mentioned about cheetahs. Nobody has cheetahs in India. Yes, sir, we have African <laughs> cheetahs now. Ajay, tell me, how many articles does the constitution of India have? Uh, some unaware of the exact number, Un I'm sorry. Unaware of the articles, okay. Uh, debate, you have, been, you have been a debater. Yes, sir. If I want to be a good debater, what all I need to learn? Just tell me five points. One, two, three, four, five. How to be a good debater? So, first of all, you have to have a clarity of thought and expression. Second, one has to learn the coherence of narrative while debating. Third, there has to be enough information about the motion that has to be debated upon. Uh, fourthly, sir, the debater has to be a good listener in order to rebut the points of the opposition. Mm -hmm. And uh, the fifth quality has to be a tolerance of uh, conflicting narratives or opposing narratives. Which newspaper do you read? <coughs> sir, uh, initially I was just following the Hindu, but now I'm following the Hindu and the Indian Express. Who is the editor of Hindu? Uh, so I'm unaware of the... Every person. day the name is printed yes. in the newspaper. How many cities it is published from? Uh, so I think four or five cities uh, are there. Uh, I mean, actually I read it on the app, so I know that there are have, certain have, editions have, have, have that... Have a look, talk. Again, have a yes, look again on the printed uh, version. Okay. Tell me three major headlines today. Uh, so first of all, uh, uh, I actually read the Indian Express today, uh, my city edition, Bhopal edition. Uh, so first of all, uh, uh, the Chief Minister of Bhopal, uh, Madhya Pradesh, Honorable uh, Mr. Shivrat Singh Chauhan, he has recently... You are telling me about the Pradesh headlines, I am uh, not interested. So no, actually this is one thing which was, point of view. Okay. Uh, so this was published in the national pages that he has unveiled a new science and technology policy mm -hmm. uh, that is inspired from the STEM policy of the country. Uh, second sir, there was uh, an article on what India's approach should be. Well, I am asking the news, not the articles. Uh, sir, India's recent uh, reaction and approach to the Afghanistan situation, mm. uh, mm. where uh, Taliban... What else? What else? Uh, sir, the 2023, since it's the International Year of Millets, so uh, there was the headline on what India should do, why Millets is not popular and what India should do. To this is a headline. Uh, so uh, the headline read uh, India's way ahead in the uh, you mm. know 2023 year of millets. Okay. Are you in favor of presidential form of government? In I India, am. sir. Yes. Yes, in India. 
so i favor the prime ministerial form of government why uh so because india because is because people vote in the name of the prime minister even when indira gandhi was there yes sir so everybody votes in their name why not have a presidential form of government and be done with state of so actually there are certain fundamental differences between the two forms I of government and i know the differences and, uh, but why are you supporting the prime ministerial system just tell me differences i know so first of all i i can tell you the yes. advantages if you want the presidential uh, form of government So you I pick up the yes, best sir. talent from wherever it's available for the country, sir, and parliament sir. still exists. The Senate is yes, still sir. there in the United States. Yes. yes so, but there's greater accountability in the prime ministerial form of government uh, as compared to the presidential form, because uh, first of all, uh, the tenure of the government is not fixed; it's on the will of the people, and uh, so the president's tenure is also fixed. So it's not fixed in India. The prime minister's tenure is not fixed in India. Where, um, in where India, wherever, wherever the presidential form of government is, uh, yes, United sir. States is fixed. No, sir. But in India, the prime minister's tenure is not fixed, and that I think is a benefit in Indian context uh, because why, it uh, why not so it accords. so it accords greater uh, stability it's not fixed because any time the no confidence motion can be introduced mm. and once defeated uh, the prime minister would have to resign so it's a disadvantage that way that means he can't uh, see through his policies so but if the policies are actually not acceptable to the people what else okay uh, what are the point you have uh, second sir i believe the cabinet system that the prime ministerial form accords it offers greater scope for diversity and representation as compared to the presidential system but he can always the president can always pick up talent from <coughs> various background what is the issue sir but they are not elected and representatives and the person need not be necessarily legislator exactly sir they are not elected representatives of the people mm. in prime ministerial system the people who are making such important policies through the cabinet they are okay. representatives okay thank you so much sakshi uh, my colleagues will talk to you now thank you sir miss sakshi you are a blogger yes sir what do you blog on subjects uh so i publish book reviews about whatever books i read and then if any general thought strikes my mind i try to build a narrative around it and publish it an example of some thought that has occurred to you Uh, sir, recently I published a blog regarding the labeling of uh, UPSC candidates, the people who prefer how we are just relegated to the domain or the tag of aspirants. Uh, that is the only identity that we are known for, or uh, during the entire preparation journey. That's not the only. <laughs> so actually, in the uh, common sphere, sir, I have witnessed this even when I was studying. I have witnessed that uh, people know me by the fact that I am a UPSC aspirant. So what's wrong with it? So it's good, but uh, my entire individuality is being relegated behind, and people are focusing on only one aspect of my personality. So if I am a UPSC aspirant, I might also be a volunteer with some NGO. I might also be a teacher to some people. Uh, I might be a daughter. So the familial relationships are there. So you care about what people think about you. So I do not necessarily care about what people think. but the thing is that because we are social beings so we cannot completely be cut off from the society and there are times cutting when cutting off from society uh, sir so actually there are times very time, strong word so the thing is that there are times when certain labeling these labelings they get to the mind of the person okay and that can have negative effects so i am personally against those labels okay yes you you studied history yes sir tell me the legacy of the british empire some positive some negatives okay so uh so first of all the positives so our entire administrative machinery that we have is largely derived from the <coughs> british setup in fact the parliamentary form of government with cabinet dominance that uh, is also a british uh, legacy else? other than that sir the initial economic setup that we had a mix of agriculture and then industries that was a british legacy the permanent uh, army the permanent permanent standing army that against uh, is a british legacy negatives a uh, negative sir uh, so first of all the education system which was initially based on the formula of rote learning and the lack of creative space in the education system that was a british legacy further sir you about the negatives yes sir that was a so rote learning is a british legacy Yes, sir. The and initially the kind of education system that was there. Uh, other than that, sir, uh, 
the widespread poverty in the country during the independence time that was actually a british Good legacy point. what else uh, other than that so uh, um, what was india's gdp india's contribution to world gdp before the british came and india's contribution to gdp after they left so i have a very vague idea about it may i be allowed to take that guess no no please don't take a guess sure, sir. now tell me uh, what does quad stand for uh, so it's a quadrilateral dialogue security dialogue yes quadrilateral security dialogue yes sir. who are the members uh, so the us uh, australia india and japan are the members it's not a military alliance no sir not yet they conduct malabar exercises naval exercises so but we do conduct malabar naval exercises with the countries but we do not uh, conduct those exercises in the broad military framework within quad no country will say this is the military exercise sorry sir no country will say openly that this is a military exercise they will always camouflage it but when the navies of two countries meet it's obviously a security and a military drill so i believe that india is against the label of a military organization it's a label. again <laughs> Um, that's also very natural it doesn't want to annoy china too much but it's an anti china alliance so that's what china is saying <coughs> yes but i believe that quad has other interests also like uh, so the countries that are there they have common economic interests they have common interests in the overall regional security not just china moreover there are common challenges like emerging technologies cyber security climate change particularly in the context of AUKUS how is it different from Quad so the group of countries that uh, make up AUKUS are different so uh, it's Australia UK and the US which what is the objective so I, I believe that that is a, a economic and security alliance economic also it has an economic dimension yes sir. like what so the countries they coordinate with each other on a lot of economic issues mm, okay now my last question what are the external factors on which india's long term or medium term medium term medium term growth depends so uh, are we talking about economic growth economic growth factors external factors on which india's economic growth depends in the next two years uh, so i believe the first factor is the uh, export of various global goods because india does export a significant amount of goods so that the prices of those goods in the international market i don't understand the point what is the point you are making so if the uh, for instance if we take the textile sector sir india does export a significant amount of textiles so, so if the global prices are stable or if they show an upward trend that naturally means increasing forex reserves for the country now if the if there's a rut in the global textile market or if there's the supply is more than the demand sir what is the prices yes sir uh the second is the global oil prices sir uh because india is a energy hungry country what else? and uh, uh the third is the domestic uh, the domestic stability of various countries that uh, have trade with india uh so and trade and in general relations with india thank you ms sir thank you sir yes i see that you are an aspirant <coughs> for the indian foreign service yes sir and that uh, your optional paper was political science and international relations yes. so you have <coughs> an interest in indian foreign policy related issues yes sir now uh what can you tell me about soft power of a country so soft power is basically the power of attraction rather than coercion so uh, it implies making the other party do something without uh, the means of carrot and sticks now in terms of the global rankings of countries in terms of soft power there are many studies which have been done and where do you think india ranks presently there was a parliamentary committee which also made a study and a recommendation and there were some observations there what is india's ranking like uh so in terms of soft power while i am not able to recall the exact rank uh but i do believe that india is punching below its weight right now india is not in the top 30 yes if you were in the foreign service as a foreign service officer what would you focus on to enhance india's soft power 
So first of all, the diaspora relations, uh, because diaspora they act as living bridges uh, right, between the one. country. Mm -hmm. So that's one. Uh, second, India has to identify what areas are there in which our strengths lie. For instance, yoga. So it's said that South American countries, they uh, yoga is very popular there. Okay, that's so two yoga. That's then two, yes. some other issues. Tell me quickly which you would focus on. So the developmental diplomacy that India is pursuing. All right. So in Afghanistan and other countries where we know that our military power wouldn't work and the economic relations wouldn't suffice, developmental aid can be there. All right. Three, four other points quickly. Uh, Areas where you would focus. Uh, so these are the only points that you I'm need to take a look at that. Look at the parliamentary committee. All right. Sure. Now, Thank you. Um, if you were posted in the foreign service, name five countries where you would like to serve. Uh, first of all, sir, I'd like to serve in the US. Uh, yes, sir. Then name the country. One, two, three. So I'd like to serve in China. Two. I would like to serve in Pakistan. Three. I would also like to serve in African nations like South Africa. Four. And uh, I think I'd like to serve in Brazil. Brazil, five. Sir. Now with Pakistan, we have an ongoing problem relating to terrorism. Yes. They engage non-state actors from terrorist organizations to wage proxy war against India. Correct? Yes, sir. Can you name some of the major terrorist organizations operating from Pakistan against India? Uh, so we have the Jaish-e Mohammed. Uh, we have uh, Al Qaeda is there. Uh, these are the two that I'm aware sure? of. And uh, Al Qaeda is more universal and all, but the Western uh, focus, anti-India focus. So JEM is one which I'm sure of. Yes. And uh, I, I believe Tehreek e Taliban is there in the front in the front that's areas against, of Pakistan, uh, but uh, that's not so. It has a spillover. Lashkar-e Taliban. Lashkar-e Taliban. Can you yes, name sir. some of the major terrorist attacks which Jaish e Mohammed and Lashkar-e Taliban have carried out against each other? Because if you're posted in Pakistan, if you are a foreign service officer, you may be required to speak on these issues wherever you're posted, not just in Pakistan. So, can you tell me some of the terrorist attacks which the Jaish e Mohammed carried out against India? So, the Uri uh, attack that happened and the Pathan Court uh, air base attack that happened. I Who carried out the Pulwama attack? Uh, so, well, I'm, I'm not sure if okay. it was And what did the Lashkar e Taiba do? Can you, any major attack they carried out? Uh, so the 2611 terror attacks Correct. in Mumbai. The Mumbai terror yes. attack. And who leads the, who's the head of the lashkar e taiba uh, Name is in the papers every second day. So I'm unable to recall who it. Who heads the Jaish e uh, So Masood Azhar is... Correct. Okay. Yes, you have to brush up on terrorism. Yes. Because terrorism from Pakistan is a major issue. What can <coughs> India do at the international level to contain Pakistan-sponsored terrorism? So first of all, uh, India has to make a global narrative against Pakistan. Uh, we have to make, make it acceptable and you know common knowledge in the international sphere that Pakistan is a sponsor of terror. Second, India has to cut the sources of terror uh, funding in Pakistan. So How? recently, Pakistan. How will India cut that? So India can definitely make pressure on. Uh, so recently, Pakistan was removed from the FTA grey list due to American uh, help. So India could actually help in making a counter opinion to that because that is a big... Now why did America get Pakistan off the grey list? So I believe that it was a mix of certain uh, geopolitical and strategic interests of more. America. More. Uh, particularly Afghanis in Afghanistan, sir. Uh, America retrenched from Afghanistan and now it's looking for partners that can help it uh, gain certain traction there. And Pakistan has always been known to hold certain traction in Afghanistan. All right. Now, again, as a student of international relations, you would have followed the Abraham Accords. Yes. Which countries were signatories to it? Uh, sir, it was uh, Israel was the one. Yes. Uh, Egypt was there in the Abraham Accords. Are you sure? And, uh, Egypt was a signatory to the Camp David Accords oh, of yes, 1978. Yes, the Camp David Accords. Yes, sir. I, again, I have to brush up on these things, sir. All right. Uh, there were two GCC countries which were signatories. Um, By the so way, it, what is the GCC? What does it stand for? So the Gulf Cooperation Council. And how many members are there? 
you know. Oh, what is the importance of the GCC for India? So, first of all, uh, oil, sir. Uh, these are uh, the countries. Which are GCC countries are major suppliers of oil for India? I'm following up on what you said, oil. Uh, so, Saudi <coughs> does supply some of the oil. Uh, Iraq is there. But Iraq is not a GCC it, country. All right, sir. But uh, Saudi Arabia is one such country. And? Um, so I believe that uh, UAE is one country, but I'm not sure if uh, it supplies a lot of oil to India or not. It ranks presently at number four. Okay. Which country is the largest oil supplier to India now? Uh, so... Um, well, you see, oil is very important yes, for our sir. country. Industry, the entire system moves on oil. Yes, sir. So I have an idea about the major suppliers, but okay, which exactly? Tell me. So I know that the US supplies us a significant amount of oil. Uh, but it's Saudi not at number one. UAE is there, Saudi Arabia is there. Before Katsa, Iran was the one country which was supplying a lot but of oil. But now Iran is not a supplier. Uh, yes, but now we have stopped that oil trade. Is Russia a major supplier? So um, I'm not sure, but I I think it's a, it's a supplier, yes. But, Where uh, does it rank? Yeah, the exact Read supplier. some reports about it, you will find it very interesting. Okay, my last question to you. You were talking earlier about containing China and the occurs. What is meant by the string of pearls, China's string of pearls? Uh, so Chinese uh, string of pearls policy is uh, is a policy of encirclement <coughs> of India. Matlab, it's not directly, uh, they have not directly stated that, but actually it's a, it's a policy to encircle India through occupying various bases in the Indian Ocean. Which, like which ones have they occupied? Uh, the sir, the Humban Tota port in, uh, U, in uh, Sri Lanka they have. They've also made inroads in Maldives uh, as and also... Uh, so they are vying for certain bases, although they have that they haven't been successful, but they have been vying for places in Myanmar no, and Bangladesh. You haven't mentioned the one base which is in, the biggest threat to Indian security. So in Pakistan, the what's the name of the, the Quetta or um, Quetta. Anna Pera. Well, it's a very important factor for our security. A Chinese base operating from Pakistani territory. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <coughs> yeah, Miss Shakshi. Tell me something about the uh, idea of justice, latest idea of justice. Um, so, so uh, one of the more uh, recent concepts of justice was given by John Rawls, who first of all, he believed in, uh, uh, in a mix of procedural justice, which means that certain set criteria or standards have to be followed if the principles of justice are to be met. Further, there has to be a distributive justice. So uh, a particular entity, say the state, has to focus on distribution of certain public goods to all the individuals. Also, the principle of equity as well as equality are very important in Rawlsian concept of justice. That is also Rawls. Sorry, sir? That also is by Rawls. Uh, sir, Rawls has a criteria. Of all these three things you said is about Rawls. Yes, sir. But after Rawls also, there have been an idea of justice, some improvement. So continuously there have been uh, revisions in the theory, even Rawls himself re uh, revised his theory a few uh, years later. Mm -hmm. So the later on revisions, they, uh, they take on the, uh, the cultural criteria in the, in, the in the distribution of justice. So uh, they say that it, it's basically a communitarian point of view. They say that since different cultures, they accord different uh, value to different social goods. So there can be no one universal criteria of distribution. Similarly, there can be no one universal criteria of justice. Any example of this communitarian approach? So for instance, the uh, differences that are there in the Western cultures as well as the Eastern cultures. What is the difference? So the Western cultures are thought are said to be more individualistic in nature. So the individual rights, they are given more primacy. Uh, but then there are certain Eastern countries like uh, say Singapore was one such country uh, where the concept of Asian values was, was being propagated. So they said that since the Eastern societies give more uh, importance to community as a whole as compared to the individual, they value the, the cohesion of the community, the authority figure, all of these things they value more as compared to individual rights. So in Singapore, if somebody commits some uh, crime, so they will catch the whole community, you mean to say? 
Uh, no, sir. It was the notion of uh, uh, which uh, criteria has to be considered while uh, how, the distribution How it will works. be? For example, give some example of that. Na, Singapore. How do they implement this communitarian idea? So, uh, uh, sir, I think it was Lee Kuan Yew who was the who first gave this idea. He mm -hmm. was the uh, the ruler of Singapore at that time. So uh, he said that when designing the political system of the country, the political authority figures they were given more power and uh, more rights as compared to individuals. So the uh, Western idea of individual rights like uh, free speech or privacy, those rights are given lesser importance as compared to the uh, rights that the state enjoys over individuals. Okay, but uh, after that there is an idea by Amrita Sen, which is the latest. Yes, sir. So uh, Amartya Sen, he gave a capability approach to justice. So he believed that uh, when you, justice is served, when the individual, they develop a capacity to do something. So uh, for instance, uh, uh, just uh, distributing equal number of books to all the people will not be justice from an educational point of view. We also have to impart the capability of learning, reading those books in the individuals. So that was his approach. Amartya Sen uses freedom, capability and functionings. What does it mean functioning? When he say functionings, what does it mean? Um, so I am unable to recall it at the moment. Okay. <coughs> Quickly, can you say your opinion about the governance, level of governance in MP? So I think we have made rapid strides in the level of governance in the country, uh, in, in my state. Uh, so the corruption that was prevalent earlier, uh, the, the mafia rush that was there earlier, mm -hmm. particularly at the lower rungs of administration, that has come down by leaps and bounds uh, by two things. First, the empowerment of the ground level uh, Panchayati Raj and second, the in involvement of ICT tools in administration. So there has been a lot of uh, transparency due to... So it is a good governance. Yes, so certain lacunas still exist, but those? it's more like a work in progress in Madhya Pradesh. Vyapam corruption case has yes, not sir. been solved yet. So that's what I was mentioning that certain lacunas still exist, but it's a work in progress. So the investigations keep going on, and whatever reasons that led to Vyapam okay, in the okay, first good, place, good. they have been identified. <coughs> Your mother is a teacher. Uh, so yes, sir, she's a principal. Tell three points to improve the quality of teaching, quality of education. So first of all, teacher training is very important. Mm -hmm. uh, secondly, the infrastructure of the schools, so more funding mm -hmm. should be there. Mm -hmm. uh, third, uh, there should be an equity in education. Equity vis-a-vis -vis girls and boys and rural and urban areas. Okay, UCC, Uniform Civil Code, what is your opinion about that? Uh, so I believe that since uh, it's a constitutional duty of the state, Article 44 of the Indian Constitution, so the Uniform Civil Code has to be implemented uh, somewhere in the future. It is a duty or the directive principle? So it's a directive principle. So the state must ensure mm -hmm. that whenever the situations are congenial, the UCC is implemented. Okay. At the same time, sir, since India is such a secular and diverse society, I believe that first of all, it's important that a consensus is built upon through mm -hmm. various communities and uh, whatever reforms that the UCC aims at, First, they have to be internal through the community. Thank you very much. Good. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Ms. Sakshi.